What's up, Game Changers? It's your boy, TJ, a.k.a. Mr. Game Changer, and I'm back with another episode of the Game Changers podcast. This is episode 87, man, and happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to everybody, man. Um, I did, just to, just to address this real quick, I did have a guest, my brother, here, but Due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, I couldn't have him on a pod today. But another time, another time. But we finna get straight into it. We got a lot of lot to talk about today. Um, wow. Uh, let's 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 start with Bronny. Let's start with Bronny James. Um, former shooting guard from USC, LeBron James' son. He's He's been talked about uh, in the sports world as far as where, what is he going to do? Uh, where is he going to go? Uh, is he going to get drafted? So he was in the combine. We've seen his vertical. Uh, we've seen his speed. Different things like that. His wingspan, his height. His height has been the talk of the town, really, in my opinion, because that's the thing that's uh, really separating him from others, but not necessarily in a good way because they saying, you know, um, I think they said no shoes or shoes, something like that. Maybe no shoes, he's about 6'1". Maybe with shoes, he's about 6'2", 6'3". Um, and it's been a lot. It's been a lot talked about Bronny James, and let me just put this disclaimer out there. We all know it is evident that if this was not LeBron James' son and another college player had Bronny's numbers in college, we would not be talking about this man at all. But we are, because he is LeBron James' son, so let's just put that to the side. Let's get that out the way, okay? He's LeBron James' son, and he's going to get the coverage. Now, um, is he NBA ready? That is the question. That is what has been circulating. Is he NBA ready? His last scrimmage in the NBA combine, uh, he had 13 points. I think he was like five for 15 shooting, something like that. Um, hmm. Really got to think about this. Um, and to some of you folks, like it ain't nothing to think about. Bronny ain't ready. Uh, G League at best, this, that, and the third. He won't make an NBA roster. I get it, but I, I've been an advocate for Bronny, and I think, uh, I don't think he should have came out in the draft this year. I should have wait. I think he should have waited another year. But when your father is LeBron James, and you have the possibility to play with him your first season. I think you should take that. Even though during his interviews, he has been asked, yo, you don't want to play with your dad. Your dad say he wants to play with you this, that, and the third. He denies even thinking about it. He wants to make his own name for himself. I get that you want to make your own name for yourself, but it is still in the back of your head that your dad plays for the Lakers, and you would love that opportunity. Don't even beat around the bush, Brian. You know you would love that opportunity, and um, it's almost there. I think that he needs to get better defensively. Uh, I think that his shot release needs to be a little quicker um, because in the league full of great defenders, um, and it's it's a lot of it's a lot of great defenders in the league. Um, you're not gonna get that shot off. Uh, let's say Patrick Beverly for for example, or Jaden McDaniels, like. The sh shots that he was shooting, his shooting his shooting release look a little slow, a little slower than it needs to be. So when you have McDaniel's or Patrick Beverly on you, they they swatting that out the air. So I think he needs to work on that. Um, I think the height is his only thing. Like if he's coming out of college the same height as LeBron James we're we're having a different conversation because as far as dribbling as far as uh shot making as far as um um playmaking anything like that that can be fixed through practice repetition uh hard work days in the office long days to a day, something just work things that are gonna take work i'm not worried about that i'm really worried about his height and how he's going to fare in the league for that. He get a switch. Let's say he get a switch on Jason Tatum. Is he going to be able to guard Jason Tatum? Like, it's so many questions there. Um, and who says who even he even going to make a, a roster 
like a full roster spot his first uh, year. He may get a two way. Like I seen a couple teams interested in in him other than the Lakers, uh, the Utah Jazz, the Dallas Mavericks. I do not want to see Bronny James in the Utah Jazz jersey. I'm just saying that right now. Utah Jazz, please stay away from Bronny James. Please. Please. I don't I I I don't want to see that. Okay, as far as the Dallas Mavericks now, that's a little bit more um reasonable because I mean they got Luca, they got Kyrie. Um, and I don't, I'm not saying he's going to make that roster spot, but I mean, like in two years, like you feel me? Like who knows? Uh, they said he, he would be a decent fit as far as playing defense and shooting because you know, he, he can make shots. He just, I just think his release is a little slow. So if he works on that, um, that's what the Mavericks are about right now. Like I'm seeing Derek Jones Jr. Making threes. He was on the bulls last year. He wasn't making none of them. But now he making threes. That's because the system of the Mavericks is like catch and shoot. Kyrie drive. He going to obviously get doubled. Be open for the Tracy. Uh, we got P.J. Washington open for the Tracy. Um, and Tim Hardaway Jr. open for the Tracy. So I could see Bronny James in that system. Luka drive, double team. Like they teams are double teaming Luka and Kyrie. So somebody has to be open to shoot that three. So I can see Bronny James on that roster in about two years, not right out the gate. The only team I can see him on a roster spot right out the gate, bro, and he really has to show show greatness during the summer league if he makes the Lakers roster, but the Lakers roster, because LeBron James wants to play with his son. And if he makes the Lakers, uh, that will definitely happen. The, the chance of it happening is going up substantially because LeBron has said on multiple occasions, I would love to play with my son before I retire. So, um, he got a couple options, a couple, but it's not that many. Um, I seen a, a report on ESPN lay out what the scouts had to say about him. And it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best things like. He's, he's the 3 and D guy, but I don't know if he's ready. Uh, G League at best. Uh, his wingspan is good, but he needs to play exceptional defense if he's going to be anything. Like, they were saying his comp was like uh, Grimes from Detroit. Who else? Uh, Mitchell from from uh, Sacramento. I forgot his first name. Um, it was uh, another other comps, but... It's not looking too well for Bronny James, but me personally, I believe in him. I believe in his ceiling. I don't know if he'll be an all star or in in any type of most improved or in MVP or any type of awards. I don't know if he's going to be in those conversations, but I think he can have a 15 to 18 season career in the NBA. I do think that I uh, because we had Gilbert Arenas. He talked about training uh, Bronny. And he told Gilbert Arenas told LeBron James, oh, yeah, he's going to be fine. So when you have one of the best scores in NBA history, give the green light on Bronny James. That's all I need to hear, really. I mean, I, I already believed in Bronny before that. But when I heard that, I was like, OK, cool, cool, cool. We got a we got a we got a, 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 a NBA legend, you know, officially stamping him. OK, cool. Cool. And I don't care if LeBron James is daddy, bro. If LeBron James been like my son, I think my son ready. I think LeBron James is 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 seasoned enough to make that you know accurate assumption. Oh my my son is ready based off what I am saying. And I don't care if he like I said I don't care. I don't care if he his son or not. Like I don't care. This is what it is, and this is what it's gonna be. LeBron uh, LeBron he gonna be in the league one way and uh, in the one way or another okay so that's what i got on brownie james bro we got um we got college football college football game coming out hey hey we got travis hunter on the cover the running back from um michigan and a quarterback from texas on the front cover uh, it's going to cost you about 70 bucks for regular. The deluxe is going to cost you about 150, 160. Uh that's reasonable pr prices and people are going to pay that, bro. People have been waiting for this game for 10 years and hopefully they don't disappoint with the graphics, with the with the uh gameplay, with the images, all that.
hopefully they don't disappoint. Hopefully they have like legendary teams. Like I would want to play with Cam Newton on that Auburn team back in the day or um who else? I mean Johnny Manziel. Ooh. If they have legendary teams on there that you can pick and choose against like regular teams, like uh, you know how they do on 2K with, oh, they got the 98-99 Lakers or 98-99 Bulls. And then you can play that against the current war Warriors. Like, I would like to see that, bro. Because I'm picking uh, Texas A&M Johnny Manziel. I'm... I'm I'm here with it. I'm telling you. If I see that team, I'm... Oh, yeah, ain't nobody beat me. It's either that team or current day Colorado. I'm picking those teams. I feel like I'm going to be unstoppable with those teams, bro. What is going on? I feel like I'm going to be unstoppable with those teams, bro. Um, But, yeah. Yeah, this, this this people have been waiting for this game. Um... And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just excited, man. Everybody gonna pay for it. It's kind of like a Grand Theft Auto level game. Like people have been waiting for it so long and anticipating that it's gonna be one of the highest grossing games in years. So people gonna buy it, and people is gonna be taking off work to play it, adding people on it, bro. I need to clear up space now on my PS5 just for the game. Uh, so, you know, shout out to uh, EA Sports. Uh, man, I, the next game we waiting on is Grand Theft Auto 6. That's going to be another one. I think that's going to be even higher grossing um, than this one is. So, uh, shout out to college football, man. I, I don't know if people are getting paid off of this. Uh, but as far as the players, but... We with it, hey, the play whether the players are getting paid uh, uh, for it or not, they're buying it. Like, just think about all of college football and all of their friends that don't necessarily play football at those campuses. Most co most guys at college campuses are going to be buying this game, bro. So just the colleges, period. That's how you know how many people think about this game. So it's going to be hectic. Uh, hopefully none crash or nothing. You feel me? As soon as they post the game, people gonna be purchase, 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 purchase. Uh, but yeah, man, that's all I got on that. Shout out to Travis Hunter, man. Shout out to all these dudes on this cover. Uh, it was it was a cold trailer, a cold cover. I like it. Uh, let's get to the NBA playoffs, man. Uh, so we had the Celtics beat the Cavaliers. Uh, that was pretty, pretty evident because the Cavaliers didn't look like they had enough. And, uh, it's been circulations of Donovan Mitchell, uh, being tied to the Los Angeles Lakers as they are the front runner to get him. Other teams are looking to get Donovan Mitchell, of course, but the Lakers are a front runner because I've said this, the two main things that the Lakers do need is a true big man five and a shooting guard uh austin reeves he not getting it done because we had to uh bring him off the bench last year in order for him to be uh productive and he was really productive i want to keep austin reeves but in order to get donovan mitchell we will probably have to give up uh austin reeves which would be a sad sad day in lakers nation like it's one of those where we gave up a alex caruso or we gave up kcp like those two people that we gave up hurt me even dwight howard that hurt me I felt like we should never gave up them three players or at least two of them players. But in, in true Lakers front office fashion, we did. We gave them up. So um, but I think in this instance, they might get it right because it's a necessary evil because Donovan Mitchell is in his prime and we need that. We definitely need that two guard so LeBron James don't have to play as many minutes as he did. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, we we definitely need that. But uh, the Celtics are moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, we just seen the Pacers beat the Knicks yesterday, so there will be a Game 7. Knicks versus Pacers. I think the Knicks will take that home, but if the Pacers somehow uh, get through that, I think they would be a better matchup against the Celtics. <laughs> Excuse me, um, because they're not as injury um, stricken as the New York Knicks are. Because uh, Ananobi is out, we already know Julius Randle has been out, Mitchell is out. Like 
is players that are are necessary to the team that are not playing right now. So I think um I think the Pacers would just be a better matchup uh for the Celtics. So I'm not picking the Pacers to win. I want the Knicks to win, but the Pacers would be a better matchup. We going to OKC in Dallas uh Saturday. If this is if you're seeing this on the Saturday, uh Dallas and OKC will be playing today and Hey, I'm taking Dallas. Hopefully, OKC don't push it to a game seven because that would be really critical for Dallas. But Dallas needs to close it out tonight. They need to close it out. Uh, I think Luka and Kyrie, that combination, I had some questions about it when it first happened. But as I'm watching it more and more, it's not like a Paul George and Kawhi situation where they play in the same position. I think Kyrie Irving has taken on that point guard role a little bit more than I expected. Like uh, just the other night going into the fourth quarter, he had nine points, but he started revving up, started scoring the ball more. But it's like, oh, he's really playing this point guard role, realizing that Luka is the head of this team. But when they need scoring, Kyrie can also do that for him. Um, he's he's getting other players looks. So it's not really both of them playing one on one basketball, which I love. Kyrie Irving is taking he's taking on that point guard position. And I think Luka loves it, too. Uh, so but when also when Kyrie sees Luka, um, when Kyrie sees Luka struggling, he's going to he's going to get the ball and start getting to work. So uh, I think that dynamic is working very well together. So I'm taking Dallas over OKC to go in the Western Conference Finals. And then we got a game seven. Probably the best series of the second round, the Timberwolves versus um, the Nuggets. Wow. Game seven. Uh, and I like Anthony Edwards, bro. If Anthony Edwards can somehow get to the Western Conference Finals, to the finals and s win a championship with this team at 22 years old, bro, I think for the last couple of years, it's been different people as far as the faces of the league. Um, Jokic being one of them, Luka being one of them, um, Jason Tatum, he been put in that conversation. But I think... Anthony Edwards would be firmly put in that number one spot as far as face of the NBA if he wins the championship this year. So uh, they're going to a game seven and um, he told he told the the Nuggets equipment people that, oh, we're going to see y'all up back here at game seven. And what happened? They blew them out by 45, damn near a 50 burger. And now they going to a game seven in Denver. And uh, I uh, now on the other side, them boys, them Nuggets boys, they ain't nothing to play with. OK, so this is a formidable matchup because they're going like in the third quarter. It was like four minutes left, but the game was already over. They was up by like 40 points. So they benched their players in the third quarter, the whole fourth quarter as the starters were on the bench. Everybody was sitting down. But. Jokic and I seen the memes of y'all saying oh he won Jokic is so happy he won game away from being back at home with his family and his horses that was hilarious that was funny but I don't think he wants to go home just yet because he stood up that whole fourth quarter and was just watching from the sideline on his feet he did not take a seat that whole fourth quarter and I think that man is going to be on a mission but so is Anthony Edwards if Rudy Gobert and Cat helps Anthony Edwards they're going to be fine. Jaden McDaniel hit shots. Mike Conley hit hit shots. They're going to be they're going to be fine. And not just because the Nuggets beat my Lakers. I'm picking the Timberwolves because I just think that um they they are better uh as a team defensively. You feel me? So um, I think they met their match as far as defensive wise because Denver and Minnesota are both uh, very good defensive teams. But I think Minnesota just a tad bit out defense uh, Denver. So when that happens, it's just it was an energy thing last game, really. Like when that defense was put on them, it was like they they would just kept piling on. So it's about who who wants it more, who's going to come out with more energy. Like, 
Like, even during the game, he like uh, Anthony Edwards. And I think at 22 years old, you had this type of leadership. Like, this is why you should be the face of the league because he's talking to his team. He's like, yo, whenever we get up, we get lax. Let's not do that. Keep the foot on the gas. I don't care how many points we up. I'm paraphrasing, but he said something like that in the huddle when it's third quarter. They up by like 30. Keep y'all foot on the gas because they know this is defending champs. They go in the game seven. They need this. So this is going to be a great matchup Sunday, game seven. Um, so I'm going to get my predictions real quick. I just I just said the Mavericks, so it's gonna be Mavericks versus Minnesota Western Conference Finals, Celtics versus Knicks in Easter Conference Finals. I think the Celtics take care of the Knicks, and I think the uh, Timberwolves take care of the Mavericks. But I do think the Timberwolves uh, and Mavericks are gonna go Game Seven. Like it's gonna be a couple more Game Sevens that we see because these teams are not going out without a fight. They had long seasons. They had injuries. They had to sacrifice things with their families at home. That's what sometimes we don't think about. Like even though and multiple players have said it. I think Kyrie Irving said it. I think uh, uh Josh Hart has said it. Like oh, we got people working 12-hour shifts, uh, but we just come here and play basketball, so I would just like to appreciate that. It's easy, you feel me? Like, I, I don't complain about minutes. But at the same time, NBA players do make sacrifices with their family, with their loved ones, you know, traveling a lot. So it's like, yo, yo, these players have sacrificed a lot during the season to get to this point, and I don't think nobody is just going to give it up easy. Nobody. So I think yeah, we're going to see a couple more game sevens for sure. For sure. Shout out to the NBA. Shout out to the players. Shout out to y'all just working hard at y'all crab, bro, and getting to this point. It's entertaining. And me as a fan, I just want to clap it up for y'all. I appreciate y'all because I'm watching great basketball every single night, bro. And I love it. I really do. I really do, bro. Uh, Who we on next? Let's go to Caitlin Clark real quick. Uh, She she and the Indiana Fever is 0-2 currently right now. And there's been a lot of chatter uh, as far as how she's doing. Um, um, The impact that she's having. She's not doing too well. The other night she had more turnovers than assists. And I've heard some people say that, hey, y'all need to, um, y'all, uh, some of y'all need to ease up on her because she's the face of the league. And if she go down and she look bad, then the revenue is going to go down because it's like, oh, she's not all she's hyped up to be. I don't want to watch it anymore. But they are currently changing up arenas because she, they need more seats for people to come watch her. So I disagree with that. I just think that, um, and how oh, it was a tweet, but I'm gonna try to paraphrase it. Somebody said, Y'all need to realize that Kaylin Clark is good, but it just shows you how better the WNBA is. So, like, y'all been downplaying the WNBA for years, but these girls are actually professionals. So, Kaylin Clark is good, but it's just the league is even more better than y'all thought. So like Kayla Clark was bringing all these eyes. Uh, the 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 WNBA draft was uh, four times the viewership than the last WNBA championship or whatever the WNBA finals, and that's that's on part of Kayla Clark, Angel Reese, and that class that just got drafted. Um, but the WNBA has still been good really good these are true professionals so i think y'all down playing of the wnba is what is causing this and i agree with that tweet it's it's this was causing y'all to look at kaylin clark a little way which y'all shouldn't give her some time you feel me even colin coward i watch him a lot he said the wnba should you know give kaylin clark an easier pathway her rookie season because y'all giving her uh the back-to-back -back champions not back to back the champions from last year and uh two of the best defensive teams in the next four games like y'all giving her a hard schedule and i kind of disagree with that because i mean well you get in the league but at the same time he was saying like he uh, you got to make certain sacrifices like he made the example of messi in the mls 
playing for Miami, they have a salary cap of what you can pay a player, but they went over that about three times that because it's it's messy. Like he has a golden foot. Like he's he cemented in football hall of fame. You feel me? So they made certain sacrifices for him. So he was saying that the WNBA should make certain sacrifices for Kaylin Clark, giving her an easy schedule, but the schedule is already out. It's already cemented. So they can't really change that, but they are changing the charter planes. They said it was probably going to cost more than the WNBA can allow, but it's a necessary evil. And we keep talking about necessary evils in, um, um, this episode because i mean it, it, it's necessary like if caleb williams needed something done the chicago bears would probably break a couple rules to get it done bro and that's just my opinion when you have a special player a generational talent in caitlin clark and Lionel messi and uh caleb williams like you you can make certain adjustments break a couple rules like they finna get charter planes to most of the wnba players now because caitlin clark i seen her in that um in that airport people taking pictures videos all oh, that's clayton caitlin clark they need a private jet bro they can't keep flying commercial angel reese also said something about it she's very popular herself i can see forget about the fans caitlin clark is fine not caitlin clark angel reese is fine bro She's fine. So I can imagine dudes coming to her, especially Chicago. Oh, let me uh, uh, let me holler at you. Or you you just sitting in a random seat. You feel me? Like, y'all, of course, however the seating arrangements is, let's just see a dude just sit by, hey, you, Adrian, can I talk to her? Maybe she don't want to talk. Maybe she don't want to have a conversation about getting to know her, why she finna go oh, uh, and play one of the best teams in the WNBA or, you know, on that circuit. So we need to, we talking about fans. We talking about just interactions at the airport that is not necessary for a professional to have. I mean, NBA players, they getting private jets. Let's let's get it straight for the WNBA. Let's get some more revenue. Come on, marketing teams. Let's see how we can get some more money into this league because I think it's necessary. I think women's basketball is necessary. I think more eyes, more money, more content on women's basketball is necessary. And I've been seeing the pictures. I've been seeing the, uh, the WNBA accounts, the NBA accounts, the sports accounts, posting more, more pictures, videos of women basketball. I'm not going to lie. Y'all y'all look good. Look good, man. The ladies look good. I'm like, hold on. Like, <laughs> Have all these all of these fine women been in the WNBA for these this long, bro? Like, like I'm just saying, I'm I'm laughing because like I'm literally watching this in real time. Of like, I've never seen this many pictures on my feed or either whether it's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Like I'm seeing more WNBA players on my algorithm and not them just playing basketball them styling walking into uh the arena with they with they nice fits on them taking pictures you feel me like they look good in some of these pictures they taking I'm like man dude, we got some fine women in the WNBA but it's like yeah like y'all it, it's probably been fine women in the WNBA y'all just Ain't really been saying it because we haven't been getting the coverage that we needed. So shout out to Caitlin Clark. Shout out to Angel Reese. Shout out to everyone who's helping pushing this league forward. And I think it deserves everything that uh is coming to them. Um, let me just say this real quick. Uh X Men ninety seven on Disney Plus. I really need y'all to watch it for those who's listening right now. Shout out to all the people who's been supporting me, man. Uh, X Men ninety seven is one is one of the best shows of twenty twenty four. Even though it's animated, they got Magneto on there, Professor X, X Men looking like I ain't never seen X Men look before. I'm not a comic book person, so I'm like, uh, my eyes is like opening. Like I'm like, oh my god! Like the type of fight scenes, the type of drama that's going on. The it's is great, bro. You see characters like you see different characters like Black Panther, Spider Man, Iron Man. That's not even in the X Men, but they make making little cameos captain america bro x-man 97 disney plus go watch it now go watch it now bro uh what else we got 
okay, I just want to say this. Uh, I would say real quick, but maybe it not. It won't be real quick. But Lil Yachty. So Lil Yachty. Uh, I don't know if he was being interviewed. I didn't really watch the whole clip. I didn't really want to because, like, you know how they had a caption up of what he said. I already read it before I clicked the video. I didn't want to watch the full video. I only watched a little bit. Of it. But Lil Yachty said he told Drake that in the rap beef between him. <laughs> And Kendrick Lamar, that Drake didn't win or lose. And then he went on to say that, um, first of all, that's untrue. He lost, Lil Yachty. Uh, then he went on to say that, um, what did he say? I'm blanking. Why am I blanking? He went on to say that, oh, uh, people, Drake already lost before the battle started because uh, people hate hated on drake and that's why he didn't even have a chance like he lost before the battle even started bro uh and this is why i'm saying like i get that drake is your man and you gon' you on his side i get that little yadi but you cannot coddle him bro you cannot bro you cannot coddle this man be, be, because before even Kendrick responded, he's dropping, give me 50. Dropping, uh, drop, draw, 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 drop a 50. Come on, you drop. He's saying drop, Kendrick. Oh, I, you know, I've been wanting this for years. You feel me? I'm, I'm getting my pen right. Come on, drop. We waiting on you. He dropped two songs saying we waiting on you. You was not saying none of this when Kendrick did not say nothing. But as soon as... Kendrick come out the closet. The boogeyman come out and said some disparaging things about your your favorite friend, your favorite artist. You just you you just want to cape for the man. Oh, he lost before because people hate. People hate on a lot of artists. Every artist has haters. Okay, okay. But I get that Drake is on another uh, uh another level. So you're gonna be like he has more haters than everyone else. That's gonna be his rebuttal if we're talking face to face right now. That's gonna be his rebuttal. But come on, bro. You can't coddle the man. He asked for this battle and he got it. Both sides lied on each other. Kendrick lied about uh the daughter and then. Um, Drake lied about uh him beating his wife, and he lied about the con the contents of where the bag came from. You feel me? It's some other tea being uh exposed, and so many people are exposing things that it seemed like you know Kendrick Lamar is the is the winner. Is we fought? Is we talking about bars, songs, uh catchiness, bro? You literally have three different styles trending right now. You have text trending on Twitter. Why is Baca around when he has a weird case? Baca has a weird case. Why is he still around? You have multiple people. At, uh, what is it? 10, 15 days, two, three weeks after this, this battle has uh, concurred. People are still to this day, bro. Baca has a weird case. Why is he still around making memes off of that? Making memes off of that. I'm taking text, and then we got the audio. The not like us. That's still blowing up, bro. That's still blowing up. You got people crip walking. That's not crip all around the world. They they over here. They over here all around the United States, the world, really. Canada, different places like that. They going crazy, bro. They got a restaurant in Toronto that 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 has a a menu on a a item on their menu named after Kendrick Lamar and the song, bro. Come on, bro. So we got text, we got audio, and then we got video. The video of all the reactions of Meet the Grams, of Not Like Us, of just all Kendrick songs, all of those reactions are still trending to this day. I scroll on Instagram, I scroll on Twitter, I scroll on TikTok, bro. Those are the three main places where you can scroll. Even Facebook. These are all still popping up on Kendrick songs, not Drake songs, Kendrick songs, bro. And I get he had a shooting at his place, you know, all some personal things, but he lost this, bro. Lil Yachty, you cannot say the things that you're saying and see the impact that this is having. Seeing the a impact that uh, Kendrick is having. Oh, cool. Of course, he said certified lover boy, certified pedophile. 
Okay, cool. Well, little, your little Yachty probably going to say, well, Drake is not a pedophile. How, how does he know that? Come on, bro. But he said Kendrick beat his wife when, in fact, we got from multiple sources that Kendrick's wife been in New York with Kendrick this whole time. The last three months, he she's been there. So it's like he like, what are you talking about, Drake? We we bring up lies that multiple uh, parties have told, but it seems like it is more lies on Drake's side. Lil Yachty didn't bring up those lies or from what I've seen. I Like I said, I only seen half the clip because I already know what Lil Yachty was going to be on. He caping for his man. He coddling Drake. That's that's a crazy statement for you to say that, oh, he lost before the battle even begun because people hate on Drake. You was not saying that, bro. And that's what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't like, people don't like to keep the same energy, bro. Keep the same energy. Drake was out here spazzing, talking crazy about Kendrick. Said something about his wife. Lil Yachty, I didn't see you say nothing. I didn't see you, I didn't see nothing go viral. I didn't see you say nothing about that. But now, oh, Drake lost it? No. He got out -rapped. You feel me? He lost. He lost by a landslide, too. They not like us. OV ho. Oh, like even that line by itself. OV ho. OV ho. Now step this way. Uh, step. It. Like, come on, bro. He made a step out of your man's logo. It's over after that. It ain't. That's not about hate. That's about man. Man, he he's really dissing him on multiple levels. It's not just one level. He went to level one, level two, level three. Probably stayed on level three a little bit, level four. And then you now you seeing his whole body of work like, wow. Wow, from Euphoria to 616 in L.A. to meet the Grams to not like us. Wow. He's right. Wow. I seen the reaction on Meet the Grams. Some people are saying Meet the Grams are are is the best uh, diss track throughout this whole debacle. You feel me? And I seen the reactions on that. People like, oh. And of course, the daughter thing is not true. But let's forget the daughter. He talked to his mama, his son, his daddy, and then you was like, oh. Um, Kendrick Lamar was way more invested than it's a rap battle, Lil Yachty. I don't want to hear anything Lil Yachty has to say about rap beef. I like his music. I like your music, bro. I swear I do. I do. But I don't want to hear anything you gotta say as far as a rap beef. I don't want to hear your opinion. I don't care if that that's your man or not. I don't want to hear nothing from Lil Yachty. Nothing at all. I don't want to hear nothing he got to say, bro. Because that man, the caper of the year, caper of the year. The, the man Drake said, oh, you talking about Big big 3? Nah, it's just big me and Big D, and we got video evidence of that. He's talking about his penis on the disc record. Talking about it's just me and Big D and we seen a video because Drake leaked the video of him playing with himself. Little Yachty and you caping for that? Come on, I'm not saying uh, Drake didn't have no bars, but Kendrick just overwhelmed him by bars, songs. You feel me? Y'all tried to get into the T. He overwhelmed you with the T too. And, and you Drake has more lies about Kendrick than Kendrick has about Drake. I don't want to hear it, bro. It's over. And we hearing like, oh, Drake coming back, song of the summer or something. This beef is over. If Drake come back with something and he said something, I promise you, that would be not in his best interest. Because I'm pretty sure Kendrick has at least four more songs in the tuck that can probably end Drake's career. I'm going to just put that out here. That's my assumption. That's Mr. Game Changer saying it here. I think Kendrick Lamar has something in the tuck that may be true, that is true, that will end Drake's career. So it would be in Drake's best interest to not entertain this no more. You lost. You lost. Pick up whatever what is left of 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 what you got and just, you know, put out some slaps, bro. You 30 some years old, you on the tail end of your career. Come on, bro. Come on. There's no need. There's no need for that. Uh and last thing I'ma say is uh, the the white woman in that little congressional hearing that said the black lady got 
fake eyelashes and didn't want to apologize. See, this why. And shout out to Amanda Seals because she said something that's funny and also profound. She said it's a difference between white people and people who happen to be white. People who just happen to be white, uh, they just go about their day-to-day lives, but they also understand what's racist, what's a microaggression, what you shouldn't say, what you what you should and should not say about other races, like especially black people, and then there's white people, the the crackers, the ones that that say microaggressions, say racial slurs, don't care, think that they're they don't have white privilege. But people who happen to be white understand that yes, I have white privilege because this, that, and the third. So this is a part. This is a white person at this uh, hearing, and she said, "You got fake eyelashes." She said she don't think she said anything wrong. And then the black lady was like, "Oh, so if I sit here and talk about a a, a big, a bleached, built body, a woman," and then they was like, "Oh." Like, no, no. Since we talking about appearances, which you're not even supposed to do that. I watched that whole clip. See, I watched that whole clip before I watch anything Lil Yachty clip. I don't want to hear him talk about nothing right B. But I watched this whole clip and they said, you're not supposed to make personal attacks against anybody in this chamber. Like, it's against the law. And they was trying to recant her statement, but she wasn't trying to recant the statement. And I say all that just to say, um... Words, words have meanings. And when white people uh, think they could just say anything, do anything, that's white privilege. And I feel like sometimes and I don't want to because there's a narrative out there with white people that, oh, one day black people are going to come together uh, and come against us because of slavery. And they think that uh, because like they just have a fear of that, like a lot of white people do. Uh, that is in these political positions because you know they they feel a little guilty about what their ancestors did but that's not going to happen black people are peaceful we we just want to be treated like everybody else really we do we do that's that's pretty much it so we're not going to rise up and and uh civil war against white people but but i just think that sometimes White people like this that make comments that knew what she was saying it's it's something that needs to be done. I'm not trying to promote violence, but none of that, but somebody need to teach these people a lesson because white people I feel like I'm not talking about all white people, but you know, I just made that explanation. people who have to be white and white people, white people. They need to, some of them need to be taught a lesson for sure, for sure. You see them, you see them on the street. You see, like they need to be taught a lesson, and that's all I'm gonna say about that because I can really get in detail, but I don't want to say what I really want to say. And this is not how I feel because I would not act on this. But I'm telling you, some people in our community feel like this sometimes even though we're not gonna act like it act on it it's like you keep showing this white privilege you keep putting us down you keep saying disparaging things about our race about us you feel me and think you're just gonna get away with it because you're white and it's like uh, uh, most of the system the government is on your side including the police part you feel me like if a, if a black one, if you said something about a black woman and a black woman came into your face and was like wanting to tell you about yourself, about what you said, oh, she would look, be seen as the aggressor. You feel me? Even though you just like anything that comes out of your mouth, you think it white, most white people think it should be no consequence. Oh, no, I can say whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. Hey, it's going to come a time. It's going to come a time where that's not going to be the case. That's all I'm saying. That thought process of like, I can get away with anything because of the position I'm in and what I look like. Okay, cool. Cool. Y'all can keep thinking that. Cool. But nah. (laughs) Nah, that's all I got to say. I'm on the black woman's side. That should not have been said. She needs to be fired. Something. Some some disciplinary action needs to be put on this woman oh it's probably those fake 
eyelashes that you got on. What? Come on, bro. Come on. Catch me out. Catch me outside, man. That's what, you know what, no, let me not say that's what she should have done because that's a black woman in higher power. And like just how, just how black people uh, have been doing for years, taking the high road. Yeah, that's, that's our go-to move, taking the high road. Somebody call us a nigga, somebody say some racial slurs, somebody say a hyper-aggressive uh, aggression, somebody say go back to Africa, somebody... Just different things like that. Like, oh, shit, they're acting wild like monkeys. During a protest for the pro-Palestinian, there was a black lady that was confronting some white man and a dude jumping up and down like he a monkey, thinking he imitating us. Come on, bro. White privilege. And something needs to be done about it. But, hey, maybe not now, maybe not later, but something going something gonna to happen. Something gonna happen. What y'all think is gonna happen is not happening right now. But if y'all keep like thinking that way, then something is gonna happen. Like if you if you if you if you go up to I'm just this is just an example off the top of my head. If you go up to a group of people and every day you walk past them and they just chilling. Bad A residents just talking outside and you just throw eggs at their house every day. And then they 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 come and talk to you and you be like, oh, you call the police. Hey, they they trying to hurt us. Hey, wait, wait, you threw eggs at our house every day for the past week. You've been throwing eggs at our house. And now that we come to confront you, you call the police and say that we're being the aggressor. But, but hey, hey, we're going to take the high road. We're going to be like, you know what? Don't need worried about the eggs. We not tripping. Let's forget about this. That's what we do. Until the next week, you come back and throw some more eggs at the house. What do you think is going to happen? Our patience is going to run out. Oh, no, no. We're not taking no more high road. You feel me? We've been taking the high road for hundreds of years. No more high road. I'm just saying that, that uh, that's something that could happen. Just a thought. Uh, but that's all I have for y'all, man. Um, shout out to all my supporters. Shout out to everybody that you know it, it love me, watch the videos. We growing. I appreciate everything, all the encouragement, everything, y'all. The most important thing in this world, uh, is to try to help another person. Um, because a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of help, just a little bit, it can go a long way, y'all. Remember that. Mr. Game Changer signing out.